Hey everybody, I wanted to touch base with you on this game. I had started it uh, a few days ago, about a week ago, uh, as part of the chronological walkthrough series of World War II. We were going to have a look at uh, the Coral Sea engagement and the battles and uh, bits and pieces that went on around that era uh, and time and area. And so I found this game, uh, the, the Campaign Commander series, which is from Bellica Third Generation Games. And it is an unusual little beast. It's an area movement game, obviously enough, that you, as you can probably see, probably a little bit from the glare, hopefully you can still see that there's areas on the map. And if you go, go over to the blog, you can see that there are several uh, posts there kind of taking you through some of the gameplay. And the idea here is that you have a set of cards that you can use uh, as an action or to purchase supplies, which kind of drive the game, or you can choose to spend, uh, you can choose to do an action on the map. And one of the actions on the map, are obviously, you know, you move your ships around, you do amphibious landings and amphibious transportation, and you have sea battles and land battles. Uh, it can happen as well as an action on the map. And so you have this uh, interesting dichotomy where you choose uh, to do one or the other, here we go, one or the other type of action. Uh, so you've got these two uh, counters here, and I'm probably not going to be able to refocus because we have, uh, there we go. I was going to say because I've got the dual camera thing going. Anyway, so you choose uh, either map or cards, and that will then determine your play. So that's pretty interesting. The battles are then conducted using battle chits. So you think, oh gee, battle chits, what do you mean? No dice, no CRT, what is up with that? Well, that's all kind of funky too. So you've got these chits and you use naval uh, attacks or land attacks and depending on what they are, uh, you have a certain number depending on the quality of your units and they drive the die rolls for results that each side or one side makes when they conduct that specific battle chit action. So it's trying to derive the tactics of naval warfare and or land-based warfare via the chits. And depending on the caliber of the types of units you have, that will drive the number of chits you receive in each round of combat. So I'll, you know, the allies will play a chit, then the Japanese will play a chit, and then, you know, they, 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 you know, they're all roll, you roll off on those, right? And then someone else, the allies play another chit and you roll and then the Japanese play a chit and they roll and you keep drawing chits out of the deck until one side or the other retreats or, or is eliminated or whatever the case may be. So very interesting. Uh, and, and in particularly in this game, there's a lot of the supply drives or resource points, which give you supply points, drive the number of actions that you can conduct in a given turn. And that in of itself is very inter interesting because if you don't think one or two turns ahead, you could take your uh, honking big, where's the Navy? Oh, I've got it laid out for a battle, but let's just grab some ships, right? Let's say I take uh, three ships out and I take one resource point with me and I activate in port and I float off somewhere and I go do something. Well, if I do something when I use this chip and I don't have resources with me, I ain't going anywhere. It's really interesting, right? So you've got to be thinking one, two, three turns ahead. Okay, I'm going to move up here, drop these guys off of Guadalcanal. I'm going to build an airfield and I'm going to go do this or do that. How many resource points am I going to need? Or am I going to be able to send a ship back to bring resource points? Or am I going to leave a ship behind to bring resource points? Blah, 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 blah. So I just had an espresso, so I'm kind of hyper. Sorry, I'll calm down. I don't know if I like slash love the game yet. I am very curious about it and very interested in it. The rules booklet is only eight or 10 pages long. It's just not clear and concise and well written. And Judd, Air Judden from BGG has gone and done a fantastic job of rewriting the rules, but now they're kind of verbose for me. And I would, I'm looking here, you really only need two tables. And I think I'm going to go make them. Uh, you need a table for the supply points and what you pay for and a table for the movement points and what you pay for. And then how to conduct combat, which I've got a table that Judd did, which is excellent. Uh, and then you're pretty much done because everything else kind of, everything's driven off of your supply. 
And you've got this, uh, it doesn't matter about how you win, you accumulate VPs to win and that's all about capturing land and, you know, areas and things like that, which is all, it's all very interesting. So it's a very curious and interesting game, a lot more interesting and a lot more thought provoking and satisfying than I thought it would be. I'm not even halfway through the game yet. So this is not a glowing endorsement and radical go buy it now thing. I think you can go find that. Marco did a video review and I think he liked this game or something uh, according to Judd. So you can go watch his for uh, a full review. I'm going to keep playing this game and posting the uh, after action and battle report details from this so you can see a whole game progress out in some level of detail and perhaps get a little more insight into the game and some of the strategies that are involved. And I think every game is going to play out differently. Our game ends when you get through all of these cards, right? Uh, and depending on what order you get the cards in and see so yeah, they've all got these different colors, right? Different colors are for different things for attack and defense and operations and strategic things and all sorts of groovy stuff like that. So very cool. Once you roll through the deck, you're done, right? First side to finish uh, their deck. And so there are different times you're going to want to be moving fast through the deck and other times when you're going to be not wanting to move fast through the deck. Uh, i.e. when you're winning and when you're not winning. All right, that's it. Just want to give you a quick update on this game. Want to get it up uh, before the weekend gets started and I probably end up immersing myself in uh, another title for the weekend. Talk to you soon. Thanks. So, by the way, oh no, I'll tell you later. I'll catch you later.